Hello, I'm Matt from Ludobox.fr and today I'm going to give you an overview of Kauri. Kauri is an asymmetric board game for 2 to 4 players ages 10 and up and plays for around 45 minutes. In Kauri, you're going to be playing as a role. You have different roles and different ways to win and to play. You play as the Englishman, as the possums, as the Kiwi or as the Maori. And you are on the island of New Zealand and, for example, the possum just want to multiply and get all over New Zealand. As for the kiwi, they want to stay there, however, they are protected by their sacred trees, the cowries, and if the cowries die, well, the kiwi dies too. And for the Englishmen, they start as a lumberjack, they will remove the trees, but as conscience grows, they are going to move slowly up this track, and when they go there, they move from lumberjack to ranger, and instead of removing trees, they will hunt down possums. So the player with the most points is the winner, but the ways of getting points, as you see, are very different. So every player will have their color and their pawns, but also their board and their cards. We are going to have some card play, and we are going to play five periods of four turns each. During a turn, the players are going to uh, select two cards from their hand and play one of them for the action and the other one for the initiative. You can see that we have the actions in the boxes and the initiative here in the uh, compass. The way you play them is simply you select one card and you select another one, for example. In this case, I would have initiative three for that action. I will select this. The other players are going to make their selection and we flip them at the same time. Once we all have selected our cards, we'll reveal them at the same time. Then we resolve actions, starting with the lowest initiative. In this case, it's the possum. They have initiative one, and they will simply breed two possums in an area where there's a possum already. Then we move on to the next, and we have a tie. If there is a tie, you have a table here, and it tells you that the Englishman goes first, and they will have an action which is conditional. Either they are a lumberjack, and they will take a tree, or they are a ranger and they take a possum instead. The Englishman is here, they are a lumberjack, they take a cowrie, and they place it on their board, and that's their way to score points. Then it is my turn as the Kiwi, and I have two actions. I have an Exodus, and then the Fury of the Huya. So for the Exodus, I will simply take one Kiwi and place it in an adjacent area. And for the Fury of the Huya, I will choose a possum and remove it from its area and place it back in their owner's supply. And that's the end of the turn. We're going to discard those cards and then move on to the next turn. We are going to play four turns. After four turns, we have the end of the period. During the end of the period, if any uh, Kiwis are without trees in their area, they die and you remove some tokens such as flooding or plagues, and you also uh, shuffle all of your cards back into your deck and draw three cards. And then you move on to the next period, and then the conscience of the Englishman moves by two spaces, meaning they can turn into a ranger quite quick, and meaning the Kiwi has an interest manipulating this gauge because they have some cards that allow them to do so. so what are we going to find on those cards? You're going to find uh, movement, reproduction, removal, but also floodings, which prevent people from moving in specific places. You have plagues uh, from the possum. The Englishman also has roads, and they are able to place roads like so, and that allows them to move very quickly in one move. Additionally, we also have each a legacy card. And the legacy card is very important. We each have one, and it all ties with the actions on our board. When you take a legacy action, you're going to take one of your tokens and place it on one of your legacy spots. And it allows you to create a huge power. For example, the possum player might say, okay, I'm going to go in a boat, and I'm going to populate a very far city. The Englishman can have a second pawn that can spawn somewhere. Or I, as the Kiwi, can trigger a volcanic eruption or a tsunami. And for example, for the tsunami, I might select two coastal uh, areas that are adjacent to each other and remove everything that's in them. So we have abilities that allow us to slow each opponent down or to uh, quicken our own strategies. 
As for the Maori, the Maori, you play her with four players and she starts by blocking the Englishman, but uh, they can have a treaty together. Once it's signed, she can go to their cities and she can build uh, suburbs there and gain points that way. So you play five periods, five rounds of this. And at the end of the fifth round, you score points based on your role. If you are the possum, one point per possum in New Zealand. Same for the Kiwis, one point per Kiwi in New Zealand. For the Englishman, you score one point per tree, per carry, and also per possum on your board, meaning that you have cut them down. And for the Maori, it's the same. You hunt down the animals, but you also can build stuff and it gives you points as well. The player with the most points is the winner. And that's it for Kauri. Kauri is an asymmetric board game in which you try to fulfill your role, also slowing down your opponents. Now, bye-bye. See you on the Voxatefar.